Oh, what an intro that was. <laughs> no, you just got to love that. And you? <laughs> I want to go and get my old leotard on now and start lifting <laughs> some weights. <laughs> yeah, I don't know if it's just an age thing, but that that bring back great memories. Didn't you just love the gladiator? I, I, I've never been so excited, I've got to be honest. But listen, welcome to and Tough Talk Testimony Tuesday. And uh, we have our own gladiator with us today. Um, come on. So, Warren, thank you for coming and meeting us, mate, and uh, bless you. Not at all. It's my absolute uh, privilege. You know, when you're young and people say to you, or older people say to you, oh, you know, your life will just pass by your eyes like that, and it's all happened so quick. You know, when I see clips like that, I'm like, they were right. You know, that was like 25 years ago, but it does feel like it was yesterday. It really yeah, and it, and it only seems like yesterday that we were watching it. I was watching it in my front room with my mum, thinking, ah, they're not that strong. Uh, you know, yeah. Obviously, you boys were, but uh, you, you still think as a young man, oh, you could live with that. Maybe that was just me, I don't know. But it's great to have you, Warren. Obviously, a lot of people won't know you as Warren. They'll know you uh, as, as Ace from the Gladiators. So yeah. when was that? Just, just run that past, just as a quick overview before we get into some nuts and bolts. Just tell people when that was filmed and what was going on, how it came about. Okay, so it was an interesting time historically. So Gladiators uh, was filmed in the golden age of television. So just five channels. And uh, one channel had all the money, and that was uh, London Weekend Television because they could do product, product placement. So they had these endless budgets to, to film these great big productions. And also, interestingly, that was the first of the reality TV shows that you see it now. And actually, wow. the, the idea was inspired by an Arnold Schwarzenegger film, called, which I'm sure you guys will know, which was called um, Total Recall. Sam, you know, Metro Goldwyn Mayer, Sam, Sam Goldwyn. He watched yeah. that film and he said, we need a game show uh, that's similar to that, you know, where, where you've got everyday people, uh, you know, being able to get on the box and go up against uh, gladiators and stuff. So that's where it all came from. It was an American concept that came over here. And, uh, and it, it became the, the biggest, I think it was the biggest hit they'd had. And it had regularly over 16 million viewers. And it was a staple Saturday night television. And gotcha. um, okay. it, should, it, it shouldn't shock me, but it does today. That, that it has a real uh, special place in people's hearts. There's a lot of nostalgia for it because people think back to being with mum and dad, family TV show. You well, know, I, think, I think that's it, Warren, isn't it? Where Joe just said he used to see and watch it with his mum. Uh, if you're of a certain age, that just brings back great memories because, as you, as you said, I've totally forgotten, there was only a few channels, wasn't there? And there wasn't a lot of option. And actually going to cinema was out at that point. And, and for me, back in those days, I remember being in the gym and coming back and probably thinking the same sort of thing as Joe. Oh, they ain't that strong. And, um, but, uh, yeah, I never would have um, wanted to be a gladiator myself, but I did love the programme. And I knew um, uh, Mick, the, Mick the Wick, we used to call him down the gym. Old Wolf, I met him and trained with him as a young man. And uh, I had a lot of respect for Mick. And um, uh, so we loved the programme. And uh, it, 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 it does bring back special memories. I bet many people watching that, when they see that opening, they're just going, oh, oh I love that programme. And um, so it's great. Um, when did it end? What was the ending of it all? What happened? So, so it's TV like us, you know, nothing lasts forever. Everything's limited. It's all subject to the law of impermanence. Television's no different. So when they made the show, and they do this with all TV shows, it had a lifespan of three years. And then they said, we need a new concept. But actually, that show ran, ran for 10. It was so popular. 10 years, wow. Yeah, and, and I got in in the last sort of five years. So I knew that I was on a gravy train that would end at some point. Um, uh, but so I, I think I got there about 95, 96, it was finished by 2000, but then they tried to resurrect it. But as I say, you would then, the golden age of television was over. So you had Sky One trying to, you know, make Gladiators again, bigger and better, but on a smaller budget, uh, in a TV studio, as opposed to the National Indoor Arena that was in Birmingham, you know? So if you're going to do something and try and do it better, it's got to be bigger and better. You can't, you know, try and try and get the old magic back with, with, with less money and less uh, commitment, can you? No, absolutely. So, so unfortunately, Sky One's uh, uh, flopped, really. Right. So how did you... So just tell the, uh, the viewers a bit of background, how you got into the Gladiators, the auditioning pro, you know, process, and where you came... And uh, your training beforehand that, that got you involved uh, in the Gladiators. Yeah, so it's a bit like a history lesson here now, because we're talking <laughs> about the days of five, you know, five channels on TV. Now I'm going to talk about the days of writing a letter, and that's really what I think. <laughs> so I wrote a letter to the show at the end, like I say, first reality TV show, so you applied to go on it. 
And um, I just said that I want to go on it, but not as a contestant. That's what they were asking for at the end of the show. If you want to compete, you know, this is against the gladiators. This is where you write. Uh, but I said, no, actually, I want to be a gladiator. But at that point, Joe, I've been training for uh, a good few years, you know, through my teens and stuff. And uh, my idol was Schwarzenegger and, and, and uh, Sylvester Stallone. They were the highest paid movie stars in history at that time. And I just thought that is the way to live your life, you know. And so... Um, uh, I just thought, well, this is a stepping stone really to Hollywood. I was thinking big. I just thought, well, if I can get on some TV shows here and then get myself over to Hollywood, jobs are good. Yeah, for sure. Um, and then, yeah, so they invited me to a tryout from there, Black Friars in London, up near the London Television Centre, and I got the job from there. Brilliant. So as a kid, you, you were into trainings as a, as a young boy, and obviously you enjoyed the, you know, the Schwarzenegger movies and the Stallone movies like we all did. You know, we were all fairly similar. And I know, even though you originally hail from Doncaster, you were brought up in Harlow, uh, which is just round the corner from where I live in Loughton. So, and I know there's some there's some people that you know that I know as well. So just take me back as a kid. What was it like growing up? What was family life like for you and your brothers and your, your parents? It was a struggle up, really. But it was, it was back, it, you know, that, I think my parents were probably the last generation where, you know, one parent could work. You know, so dad worked. He was a roofer. Everyone in Arlo was a roofer, wouldn't they? Joe? You <laughs> so, I ain't uh, saying anything. I want you to speak. <laughs> now everyone's a loft converter there. Yeah. Yeah. Everyone was a roofer there. And uh, so, so dad's wage, in theory, should have been enough to bring up the kids. And my mum was a housewife. But actually, that things were changing. Um, and life was getting more expensive. And there's that old saying, isn't there? You can have kids or money. You can't have both. Mm. And uh, so, you know, they had four boys. And... Uh, Growing up was tough, actually, because roofing, third most dangerous job you can do. In clement weather, rains, no money, self-employed. And so, actually, I found it quite miserable. I didn't enjoy Harlow at all. We chatted about it earlier, Joe, didn't we? It was, um, we had a brother that died when it happened. Mum and Dad said, there's no God. If there was a God, your brother wouldn't have died. That made perfect sense to me. And, uh, you know, is my dad giving me all these cliches like, uh, you know, skills pay the bills and, you know, it's all about work hard, play hard. But I'm a bit like, yeah, but you don't have the happy life that you're telling me about. You know, you live for the weekends. And, uh, and, and they, they, were, they got angry with God when, when they had the bereavement. So, so I just... Yeah, so, so Warren, how, how old was you when your brother died? And what, if, I mean, if you're uncomfortable talking about what happened there, but... Uh, not what happened? But, yeah, we, we, we were all very young. We didn't really know what happened. You know, there was a baby there one minute and then there wasn't. And then mum and dad just literally, instead of going to God with this, who would we know would make sense of a, a bereavement, um, they went to the doctors and uh, and they turned away from God. And uh, not that we went to church or anything, but mum used to say stuff like God bless. And then all of a sudden she didn't. And, uh, and and so so they wanted answers. We wanted answers. And then it just wasn't spoken about. Um, and then, like I said, the weekend had come. This, this, this grief, the, you know, the natural process of grieving never took place because they were then in arrested development. The doctors prescribed them antidepressants to get through this. Um, so, so we would just essentially lose our parents at the weekend because they'd have a few drinks, pop some tablets. And we didn't understand what was going on. You know, we just know that it started off. Mum and dad were all happy on the Friday, but by Sunday, it was just chaos. Yeah. You know, mum wouldn't get out of bed and dad would be angry and we just didn't know what was going on. So we had a good upbringing, don't get me wrong. But I just looked at that and thought, the last thing I want to do is have a life like mum and dad have got. Because dad, dad was very much pushing uh, the skills pay the bills bit of us. You know, he was like, you'll all be roofers. I was like, Dad, I don't want to be a roofer. But he was coming from a place of fear. He was worried that, you know, if, if I was following Schwarzenegger, that I was just a dreamer and I'd end up a bum. So he, he, it caused a bit of tension between us, actually. And he said, if you don't have a job by the time you're 16, I'm kicking you out. And that's pretty much what he did. Wow. All my brothers became roofers, interestingly. And I got <laughs> <to be> out. <laughs> so, dare I, so dare I say you were a bit like the black sheep of the family? Oh, absolutely, yeah. yeah. So, yeah and, I, can, um, I can relate to that. <laughs> Yeah, yeah, and at the time I was like, why does my dad, you know, why am I the odd one out? Why don't he, why don't he like me? But he, looking back, you know, he loved me very much. He was a very honest man. No one works as hard as my dad. Sorry, I put a timer on there. I don't know why I put Is that. Is that us done? Oh, you get we finish? Is that all right, lad? Yeah, all right. <laughs> and that's the end of Tough Talk Tuesday. That's the shortest one ever. <laughs> Sorry we didn't get through the whole test. <laughs> no. that's, uh, that, that was Ace from Gladiators. <laughs> um, uh, where was we? Sorry, it was, I don't know why it was quacking like a duck. Yeah. <laughs> that was brilliant. It's going to make for it's going to make for great Facebook. No, yeah. so let, let's move on a little bit then. So you, you you've had this tragedy in your family, Warren. You're, you're bodybuilding and all that. And um, 
and bodybuilders really, like you mentioned Schwarzenegger and, and, and characters like that, but generally there wasn't much money in bodybuilding and you'd have to have been the very top end, the first top two or three bodybuilders in the world to make any real kind of money out of the sport. Um, so you've then carried on training. You've moved away from your family, have you? Is that what you're saying? Yeah, yeah. So I moved into the YWCA, the Young Women's Christian Association in Harlow. Not the young men's, the one, young women's, was it? Yeah, yeah. yeah. Well, it's just because there was no young men's, honestly. <laughs> but that's where they put me, embarrassingly. And um, uh, and so I started to think, actually, maybe that was right. You know, here I, I find myself now, I put all my, you know, I think there's a point where you invest so much of yourself and your time in something that you sort of believe what you want to believe and disregard the rest. And, and so I'd invest all my time and effort into this. And now I found myself homeless without any skills. All my brothers are now earning money, buying their first cars. And I'm like, oh no, the realization was there's no turning back. My dad was right. And I hadn't taken any drugs at that point. I I'd, I'd bought into the illusion that there's a whole sport of bodybuilding. You can look like Arnold Schwarzenegger and that, without steroids. I didn't know. I knew some people took them, um, but I just thought, no, I would never take drugs. And now I'm in a place where it's like, no, actually, the bigger the sacrifice, the bigger the payoff. And a, and a good bodybuilder I know said to me, you know, what are you taking? I said, I'm not. He said, you should, because, you know, the sky's the limit if you start taking roids. Uh, and so it was at that point at the, at the YWCA that I started to take steroids. And I found, I've got to say, I felt like a right loser at that point, because I was like, you know, I've got no skills to pay the bills. I'm living in a women's Christian, a Christian one call, you know, in a Christian association. Now I'm sticking needles in my legs to try and, to try and find an identity, you know, to try and be somebody. And, um, so, uh, you know, it was a bit like, you know, all or nothing. And so um, it was after that that my body responded to the drugs, as, as you do, because that's what they're made for. So how old were you at that stage then, Warren? Where was you? And you? Uh, I think I would have been probably about 18, 19, something like that, yeah. And uh, and um, so, so it, and it was after, you know, putting the, uh, the steroids in that everything changed. Because I was a shy kid, I was introverted. Now all of a sudden, society is saying to me, you know, I've been kicked out of home, like you say, the black sheep. Now all of a sudden, I'm accepted. People are going, wow, you look great. Look at you, you look fantastic. You look like Arnold Schwarzenegger. So you can imagine, it's my ego. I start believing it and I'm like, wow, why didn't I do this years ago? Why didn't anyone tell me? I had no idea that there's this whole business and industry around getting people to, to follow, you know, Arnold Schwarzenegger and, and bodybuilders. So um, it, it was, it was, Quite quickly into that, that I thought, actually, I don't want to get too involved with this. I didn't like, you know, the safest way of taking steroids is with an injection. I didn't like that. I thought, I don't want to do too much of this because it's bound to have, you know, ramifications down the line. So I need to make some money at it quickly and to get to Hollywood quickly, like Schwartz negative. And, and I believe this hype. You know, I was reading his books. His dad was saying to me, your life is a roofer. That's what you need to do and trying to prove that to me. I was like, no, I'm not going to follow you, Dad. I'm going to follow this bloke who's, who's a super success, thank you as far as I'm concerned. Um, and so um, that's when I started to look for opportunities. And there was a few different opportunities, like you said, Ian. There wasn't that many at the time because the, the sport had just been pioneered, really. And, it was, you know, we seem to follow on from America, don't we? And that's really what was happening. The Gladiators was a success in America, but actually it was a bigger success in this country. And I thought, I need to now make some money while I can because I can't carry on like this forever. And so I was really blessed that Gladiators came along and I got chose for that show. Yeah, so you got so so you applied, you, you went along to the rehearsal where I understand there was hundreds and hundreds of massive bodybuilders all fighting. You you, you wanted to do something a little bit different to stand out. You were spotted by the referee. What was his name? John Anderson. John Anderson, and you got picked, right? Is that is this right? Yeah, yeah. yeah. Uh, so that that was your ticket. Now just just tell us a little bit about the 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 the, the plane trip out and how it how the glamorous lifestyle was for you, whether it, whether uh, you found it was good or whether you struggled with it. And then we'll, we'll take it from there. Uh, yeah. Okay. So I went from, you know, it was, a, it was quite a stark contrast from going from essentially being homeless because I was registered homeless living in there uh, from being homeless to now being on the most successful TV show and becoming famous pretty much overnight. So they sent a stretch limousine Mercedes to the YWCA to pick me up. It took me to um, uh, Heathrow and I went straight into the first class lounge, you know, Air Mauritius, and they flew me to the Gladiator training camp, which is obviously Mauritius. And I'm with all these super fit girls and these, and these, and these superstars of TV, and now I'm one of them. So it was like, 
it was like I, it was like I died and gone to heaven. I thought this is just <laughs> incredible, you know, because there was all this risk that was involved, all this sacrifice as well. Now all of a sudden, he's paying off massively, and all that all that doubt suddenly evaporated. That my dad had sown in there, you know, they've got their world, you've got yours. Don't be a dreamer; it's an illusion. Now all of a sudden, I'm there. And obviously, you're you're probably wanting to think my dad's going to be proud of me now and everything else. And so, had you been given a contract at this stage? Or did you have to go through some more hurdles, or was it no, now? Pretty much, yeah, pretty much. So, so it's a bit like the football a footballer, though. You, you know, you get you. If you're not scoring goals, your contract's not renewed. So we've got our, our contract on a yearly basis, and as glad as we were paid to to beat up the contestants, and if we didn't get seventy percent wins, we got sacked. So there was there was pressure in that, wow. and you knew you had the dream job, and you didn't want to let it go. And it makes me laugh, and I shouldn't say this, but I'm gonna. But whenever you hear any of the gladiators talking, because we all want to be good people, we'll go, oh, yes, it was amazing camaraderie. Oh, we're the best of friends. Oh, it was incredible because we were a unique team. Reality was, <laughs> we were so desperate to keep our jobs. I'm, I can only say, speaking for myself, I suppose, but we were so desperate to keep our jobs that there was a fierce rivalry. Yeah. And actually, I found that if they, uh, someone else was winning a game and you weren't, it actually, the, the, the light shone on you more that you're not performing than they are. So I speak for myself here, but, you know, there's certain glad it as they go up and I think, I hope he loses. Because then it takes the pressure off me. <laughs> Isn't that, and do you know what? That makes sense now, because most, nobody would have known, the audience wouldn't have known, you know, that there was this 70, you had to hit a 70% success sort of target. So when you see the gladiators lose and they were really upset, it wasn't just part of the show. They were obviously genuinely upset, I'm assuming, right? Yeah, yeah. And, and, and the reality <laughs> was, is, is his body, we all have huge egos. So it's, a, and, and so you, you find, 